Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Mirka and I'm your Italian tutor. And today we are going to learn something about opera. Stay tuned! So today we are going to learn La Traviata. So we are going to learn some interesting facts about La Traviata. We are going to learn the history and we are going to analyze an important text in La Traviata. Let's start! Okay. La Traviata is an opera in three acts by Giuseppe Verdi. This opera was based on Le Dame ou Camélie, a play that was basically adapted from the novel Phil by Dumas. But you know that there are four interesting facts about La Traviata, and let's go through that. La Traviata was a washout at the premiere, but not because of the opera itself, but because the people didn't really enjoy the actress who performed the main character, Violetta, because they considered her too old, and she was only 38, and too fat. Because then we are going to see the story, this person basically died for consumption, because she had tuberculosis, so in their mind they thought, yeah, but she's fat, so how can... it's not realistic, right? An important fact is that Violetta was inspired by a real person, Marie Duprécy, who was a mistress of wealthy and aristocrats men in Paris. The third important fact that La Traviata inspired other movies. Maybe you don't know, but for example, Les Moulins Rouges, Pretty Woman, and the music was incorporated in other movies, like for example, The Godfather, La La Land, and etc. The fourth aspect, which is very interesting, is the name, La Traviata. Maybe you're going to think, but what does it mean? La Traviata, if we want to Translate literally, and this is what I found online, means the fallen woman. This is an adjective that we are going to use it to indicate someone that basically is not going through the right path, that is doing something immoral. So, for example, if one of my friends doesn't drink, she doesn't go to the club, she doesn't smoke, but then for my influences, she starts doing all these activities, someone can say, Cos'è successo? Ti ha traviato Mirko? So Mirko did take you to the immoral path, right? Okay, so now let's see the story beyond La Traviata. So La Traviata we can consider as a love and tragic story. And we have two main characters, Violetta and Alfredo. It's a very sad story at the end, but we can see how true love makes you sacrifice what you have. So Violetta, as we said before, she was a courtesan. So she was a thrilling party, she had a luxury lifestyle, and she was considered a mistress to wealthy and aristocrats people in Paris. So her reputation was really good. However, she threw this party, and in that party was introduced to Alfredo. Alfredo was an admirer to her. He didn't have the courage to confess his attraction to her. And in that scene, he a toast to her, and she almost failed. What happened is, she was suspicious of Alfredo, but because she had never known the true love, so she was questioning. But at the end, she gave a flower to him at the end of the party, and she said, you're going to return to me next time we're going to see each other. Then we move to the second act, where we can see Alfredo and Violetta escape to the countryside to forget their previous life. But here Violetta starting selling her belongings to support her life. Alfredo didn't consider this important fact in their relationship, so he went to Paris to raise money. And here we have a climax. Alfredo's father came to Violetta and asked her to break up with his son, because Alfredo's sister was engaged with an important aristocrat member of the Parisian society. And since Violetta's reputation was running through the family, he could compromise Alfredo's sister's future. At the beginning, Violetta didn't really want to break up because she loves him. But at the end, for Alfredo's sister's sake, she decided to break up. And she wrote a letter. But he asked to the Alfredo's father to promise that when she will die, he will confess her sacrifice. Because Violetta was ill with tuberculosis. Okay? Violetta went to Flora's party. In this scene, she is escorted by a baron and she pretended that he was her fiancé. But Alfredo was there and Alfredo wants a clarification of the breakup because they didn't understand. So there was like a, a kind of exchange of words. 
until Alfredo lost the plot and threw money to her, saying, this is to repay you. So there was a kind of fight. At the end, the Baron challenged Alfredo to a duel. When we move to the final scene, where we see Violetta living in this modest apartment in Paris, living with her assistant, and the doctor says that Violetta has got only a few hours. So Violetta, she, want, she had a letter from Alfredo's father and she wanted to read in her tranquility. So she asked to the assistant to go out. So she started reading this letter and Alfredo's father basically regret what he did. And he said to her that he confessed her sacrifice to his son and he will come soon to visit her. But it was too late because Violetta died. But at least Violetta died with the thoughts that her lover forget her. So now we are going to analyze the text. Okay, I have selected Libiamo negli Eticalici, which is one of the most important scenes in La Traviata, in which Alfredo toasted in favor of Violetta. As you can see, I have the Italian version and I have found online the English version. I will put the link in the comment section below if you want to read the opera in English, because maybe it can be easier to understand and grasp the meaning, I would suggest you to do so. However, we are going to read it and learn important words and expressions. But be mindful that this is not the Italian that we speak every day, because this opera was written in 1850, so there are words that they belong to the old Italian. Ok, let's start from here. Libiamo, libiamo negli eticalici, che la bellezza infiora, e la fuggevole e fuggevole ora s'inibria voluttà. Libiamo nei dolci fremiti che suscita l'amore, poiché quell'occhio al cuore onnipotente va. Libiamo amore, amore fra i calici più caldi baci avrà. Now, if even though you are not fluent in Italian, you can see that there are some repetitions, ok? Ha, libiamo, amore fra i calici più caldi baci avrà. You see, this is a repetition. Let's go back, let's go down to Violetta. Tra voi, tra voi saprò dividere il tempo mio giocondo. Tutto è follia, follia nel mondo, ciò che non è piacere. Godiam, fugace e rapido è il gaudio dell'amore. È un fiore che nasce e muore, né più si può godere. Godiamo, ci invita, ci invita un fervido accendo lusinghiera. Ha. Godiam, la tazza e il cantico, la notte è bella, e il riso. In questo, in questo paradiso ne scopre il nuovo dì. La vita è nel tripudio. Quando non siamo ancora, non il dite a chi l'ignora. È il mio destino così. Ha. Godiamo, la tazza e il cantico, la notte è bella, e il riso. In questo, in questo paradiso ne scopre il nuovo di. Ok, so as you can see it's not very long. So let's go here to this phrase. Do you remember occhio? Occhio means eye. However, can you put in the comment section below the plural of this word? And then we have core. So core is an old version of cuore. However, in some southern Italian dialect, for example in Naples, they still use it. Onnipotente. So onnipotente here is translated as all-powerful. However, you can use it uh, almighty, omnipotent. So onnipotente can be a noun when we are referring, for example, to God or an adjective when you want to describe someone. In some contexts, you can also use it to be sarcastic. So you want to indicate someone that is quite maybe rigid and static and you don't want to take a snap decision before asking this person which who can be for example your partner your father your mother and i can say for example uh, one of my friends asked me shall we go to iceland next week and because i need to ask let's say permission to my partner i can say fammi chiedere all'onnipotente Meaning like, I cannot take any decision before asking him or her. Then, this one is a structure that we are going to see later on, and is a comparative. 
So in English, for example, you add er to the adjective. In Italian, we put più plus the adjective. But we are going to see soon, don't worry. An interesting verb is dividere. Dividere in English, you can have different words. So for example, you can say split, um, divide, share. In Italian, we can use it, for example, in mathematics, when you want to say dividi il 20 per 2. So divide 20 by 2. Or it can be like you're referring on your time. So, for example, I have a lot of friends and I don't know how to manage my, let's say, my calendar, my diary. So I can say, non so dividermi con gli amici. Meaning that you are not giving a lot of, you, you are not giving importance to your friends because you cannot manage your time. In English, I think you use the expression, they split up. In Italian, if you will want to say that about two people, we can say, for example, si sono lasciati. Or if you want to use the slang, you can say si sono mollati. Sorry here because it's the si sono mollati. So they break up. You can use this verb when you want to say share it with me. Okay, so for example, Someone is eating a tiramisu and they can say dividilo con me. Okay, so let's go ahead. Fulia. So this one is interesting because if we see the English translation, it's an adjective, foolish. However, in Italian, follia is a noun. And if we want to translate literally from Italian into English, it would be like madness, insanity. And there is an expression which you can say, questa è follia pura. So this is madness. And you can use it for different situation in which you think that it's crazy, that maybe they work in that way, that they think in that way. Or one of your friends took a snap decision towards something that you wouldn't do that. And you can say, questa è follia pura. So let's go ahead, godere, godere, has different meanings. In English, we can say enjoy, but has different collocation. It can have like a sexual connotation when we want to indicate that someone is pleasuring you, or you can use it to indicate that you are enjoying something. However, in English, you would say, I enjoy this, I enjoy that, I enjoy your company. In Italian, we wouldn't use this verb in this situation, but we would use the verb piacere. Mi piace questo, mi piace stare con te, okay? Godere, we can use it, for example, in more generic kind of way. So, for example, my friend and I are in the swimming pool and my friend saying to me, godiamoci la giornata. Let's enjoy the day, okay? But also this verb can be used in negative context. So for example, the classical situation can be that you have a relationship and your partner dump you for someone else. But then you find out later on that this new partner dump him or her as well after one week. So you feel like a kind of revenge, like satisfaction that the same thing happened to him or to her, and you can say, ci, ci godo. Let's go here, this noun. So, riso can have two different meanings. It can be, it can mean rice, so the food, or it can mean laugher. I hope I have to pronounce it correctly. This sound for me sometimes it's very difficult. So if you want to correct me, don't worry. Okay. Then another one, D. So D is an alternative form to indicate day, giorno. However, you don't use D in our daily conversation, but maybe you're going to use in literature, romance, poetry, okay? But not if I speak to my friend 
This one is an interesting word, tripudio. So tripudio here is translated as celebration, and actually it's quite true because during the Romans they used to do this dance and they were basically beating their feet three times on the ground. Okay, so this is just a quick notation for you. The last verb that we are going to see, l'ignora here, so the verb is ignorare. Ignorare can be overlook, ignore, not know, and we are going to use it in the same way. So for example I can use it to say don't ignore me, non mi ignorare, okay, or if I want to point out to someone not to overlook, because it's important that you pay attention on that. I think the text is ends here because then this part repeats the part that we analyzed before. So what do you think about La Traviata? Put it in the comment section below and let's share your opinion if it's too tragic, if it's too sad, what do you think? And if you like the video, remember to give it a thumbs up. Any requested, please submit it to me and I will try to make it. Be really patient during this time because my technology is not working at all and to make this video, it took ages, but I'm here for you. Bye for now.